Good afternoon. Welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Bradatar, and I have multiple guests with me today. I have Steve Malik and Seth Vermilia. Did I do that right, Seth? Yes, thank you. From the Greater Chicago Ferret Association in Lyons. And we have three ferrets. We have Murphy. That's Murphy. We have Winston. 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 And then we have a girl who's hiding under a bag, I think. She, Actually, she she's is. under the carpet. Lucy. <laughs> That's Lucy. Yes. Lucy. And they are ferrets, pet ferrets. What kind of a home is a suitable home for a ferret? Um, ferrets are normally not caged animals in as much as they need their cage. Um, their cage is their haven where they go. They need at least four, three to four hours minimum of playtime out. Uh, they need a, a climate control the atmosphere. Ferrets have no sweat glands, so anything over 80 degrees prolonged in the temperature could actually kill them. They're like cousins of weasels, skunk, otter. Okay. So they're not, they're domesticated, they're a domesticated animal. They've been domesticated for over 5,000 years. They're completely dependent on human interaction and um, they cannot survive in the wild on their own. I couldn't take it out in the woods and just turn it loose? No, not at all. That would, that would, that would, that's almost, that's an instant death sentence. I mean, ferrets mm -hmm. probably, depending on the condition outside, could maybe last up to three days, but they have no survival or hunting instinct left at all. The girls go get up to about three pounds. That's a Lucy. She's a girl, and the boys are slightly bigger. They can get up to about you know five or six, five pounds probably, and they're just a little longer. Tails yeah, vary, cool. colors vary. Yeah, they come in all. I see them. We've got three very different colors here. Right. We have an albino in there and two sable type colors. Um, most of them come from Marshall Farms. It's the largest breeder, and um, they all come spayed and neutered from there. So I mean, they can't. They cannot. The only, the only way to have them unspayed or neutered if you're a breeder, otherwise there are certain conditions they get, the girls can get anemia and basically they'll die. So, so definitely spayed or neutered. Yes. And I understand that the, is it the males that have a scent gland? They both do actually. Mm -hmm. And the scent glands are also removed when they're young. So, I mean, the scent glands, the, 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 it's not really like a skunk, skunk scent gland or anything like that. Yeah, it, yeah. it, could, it could be a little must smell. Yeah. If, the, yeah, if it's there, they'll spray to mark territory or if they're scared. Um, but uh, most of the ones that come from a breeder are going to have... Are He's gonna, rearranging his cage over Yeah, he keeps over. moving it. It's fascinating. Um, we'll, we'll come with them already removed. And they do have, um, since you mentioned scent gland, they do have an odor most people know. Um, or think that ferrets will stink. Um, and just like any animal, um, if they are not bathed on a regular basis, usually these guys get bathed about monthly. If they're bathed more often, then their skin gets more oily and they'll actually have more of a smell. It's really important for ferrets to have actually really comfortable housing. The um, Ferret Nation cage is the one that the GCFA recommends and it's the one that we have in our shelter. It's a great cage, it's actually, um, able to open, the doors open very wide so you can get in and um, do cleaning very easily. And um, they need comfortable stuff to lay in. And actually the best thing about how, where they live and their habitat is that it can be things like old jeans, big sweatshirts, and are you trying to get up and say hi? Equal kind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> big jeans, old sweatshirts, um, t-shirts to cover um, ledges and um, uh, big fluffy blankets, you know, that kind of stuff. But there is some great stuff that's out there that um, is made just for ferrets um, that gives them a nice dark place to crawl hammocks into. Hammocks and things I've seen. Yeah, hammocks they love, um, they love cubes, anything that can give them a place to tunnel in and have a dark den. Because if they don't have um, that dark space, then they don't get the best sleep that they need. And um, it, it's, it's just healthier for them to have a dark space to sleep in. Are they nocturnal? No, actually, they're not nocturnal. They'll adjust to your schedule. These guys have um, adjusted to different schedules throughout the years. Ferret proofing is actually one of the most important things you can do if you have ferrets because um, anywhere their head will fit, and I'll show you this, his head is that big and the girls are smaller. Um, anywhere his head will fit, the rest of his body will go. So while it, f it looks fat and chunky, he will squish and I'm not hurting him in any way, he'll squish down to get through holes. His body is also very malleable. Wow. It 
twists and all sorts of contortions. It's fair and play, um, Yeah, yes. and until you're used to handling one, I wouldn't do that on your own, because you, you, know, you can hurt their spine. But he's very twisty and malleable. Um, and he'll get almost anywhere there's a hole. And he'll find holes you didn't know existed. We have a rescue, actually, at our uh, place that has had been kept in cedar bedding. The original owner didn't know that cedar bedding was bad. And, and the pet shops will sell it to you. And the pet shops will sell it to you because they don't know. Mm -hmm. They're just selling a ferret to someone who wants to have something fun. And the um, cedar bedding is causes a highly allergic reaction in the ferret discharge. And he went to the vet, and the vet thought, the vet thought that he had, uh, what was the name of it? Uh, distemper. Distemper. And they were ready to put him down. Uh, because he was, not only was he ill and a baby and having this huge reaction, he was so scared, he was reacting violently. And if, I don't know if you can see this, but their teeth are large enough that they are very sharp. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he was so scared, he was nipping at the vet. And that's also a, a common um, thing for distemper. And luckily, we thought to ask, well, what was his home environment like? We found out about cedar shavings and realized that he was having this severe allergic reaction. But he is on phenobarbital for the rest of his life because it caused some problems with his brain, and now he's constantly having seizures if he's not on phenobarbital. The shelter uses Midwest Exotic um, for their, all their veterinary needs, and they're actually a great shelter. They specialize in exotics. Um, which is one thing to know if you're getting ferrets, you're going to be seeing an exotic vet. Your vet bills are going to be higher than if you have a cat or a dog and you're used to um, common cat or dog bills. They're, you're going to spend about $1,000 in each ferret in vet bills. The vet needs to be specialized in exotics because these little guys, while they are pre you know, they're, they're a predator, so they're similar to cats and dogs, but they're... they're smaller, their diseases are unique, um, they are, Steve calls them little cancer factories because it's very common for them to get cancer, extremely common. Um, it's, in fact, it's rare if you have a ferret that does not get cancer. Um, so you just need to be prepared to know that they'll live for about seven or eight years and have a doctor, a vet, that understands the specialized cancer that they get and how to treat it. Uh, a ferret is very, very, very playful. And they're, they're kind of like babies their entire lives. And so when you play with them, they'll jump up and down, and they want to play with you. So they'll, they'll, they may jump on your leg. If you play with them with your hands and tickle them, they may come at your hand and, and nip at it like a puppy would. Mm -hmm. This is called scruffing, and it's, it's something that um, the ferret is used to because of how its mother carries it. Okay. So it doesn't hurt it in any way. And you can see his body kind of goes limp. It's something that is commonly done to give medication or to examine the ferret by feeling okay. it up and down. I feel better. Um, nails too. Yeah, cutting nails this That's way everything. is easy. That's how they do. Uh, roll over. Oh, look at that. Good boy. Hey, that's my father. That's part of the charm of ferrets. They're just very intelligent, emotional animals. Yeah. They really, really crave, even if you have a pair of them, they really need human interaction. They wait for you to come home from work. Two. Good boy. Yeah.